All right. Welcome back to your regularly scheduled Wednesday morning ramblings, depending on where you are in the world. This week, I am going to be talking about autism and being autistic and... (laughs) (laughs) Alcohol. I promise this hasn't been, I haven't been drinking. This is coffee. It's actually too early in the morning. This is symbolic, but but you get what I, I, I'm getting here. Let's dive in. <laughs> Maybe I've had too much coffee also. <laughs> Good thing that was empty. This is one of those videos that has to come with a disclaimer because I am going to be sharing my individual experience as an autistic person with alcohol and also a bit of the experience from some other autistic people I know who also I know would be okay with me sharing their experience as well, though I am going to omit names to keep identities invisible. My experience may not be the same as your experience if you are an autistic person. So if your experience differs from mine, I do invite you to share, especially if your experience differs from mine in the comments below. If your experience is similar and you relate, please feel free to share that too. Neurotypicals, please, as I have said before in previous videos, remember that this is just my experience. And please read the other autistic people commenting to see that experiences may vary. Now that the disclaimer is out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. Before I talk about alcohol and my experience with alcohol, I want to say that in general, my experience as a neurodivergent person has been that chemicals and substances and medications do not work with me the same way that they work in neurotypical brains. For example, which we know ADHDers, caffeine works differently with us than it does with neurotypical people. A lot of medications don't seem to work the same way with my brain as they are intended. I tend to have a lot of side effects and reactions with medications. So in general, I know substances work differently for me. I have known other autistic people both personally related to me and who I would consider close family and friends who have similar experiences with substances not working the same for them, including alcohol. Uh, And some of you online have also made comments that substances and medications and things like that don't work the same in your brain as they do for neurotypical. If this is you, I'd love to invite you to continue that conversation uh, in the comments below as we talk about autistic experience with alcohol. And I share my experience with alcohol now, 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 I'm gonna share it now. Something unfortunate that I see is neurodivergent people self-medicating with alcohol to numb themselves to discomforts in the neurotypical world. From personal experience, I can say that I used to use alcohol because I had social anxiety and had all of these mandatory work networking uh, happy hours and events where there was always free alcohol and alcohol made the anxiety numb and let me tolerate being in these situations that if I was listening to my gut and myself and how I really felt, I would have chosen not to go to anyway. I was putting a band-aid on things 
one or two drinks and I notice that the sensory experience, if it is a bit overwhelming, can sometimes become a bit less intense for me. And it is easier for me to go with the flow a little bit as my inhibitions go down. But it doesn't take as much alcohol as it takes other people to get me tipsy. Often, the boundary between enough alcohol to numb my senses a little bit and enough alcohol to make me dizzy and give me vertigo and make me start getting sick is a very fine line that I could be tiptoeing very close to. It can go from sensory numbing to sensory overload. Often I will get to that sensory overload point before I actually start to get tipsy and start to get a lot of those feel-good feelings that people seem to be chasing with alcohol. So alcohol has never really been that magic thing for me. I, I don't, I don't love it. But as I am growing older and I have become a legal adult, I have learned to drink responsibly and I may have a couple alcoholic beverages on occasion, but I usually don't have more than a few in a very short time period. And by a few, I mean like usually two. Two tends to be my limit. Limit. Sometimes I might have three if I am stretching them out over many, many hours. Now that I don't force myself into situations that make me socially anxious, really like alcohol, the taste of it, uh, unless it's in a really nicely flavored drink or the effects of it. I don't like to be drunk. So that tends to not be my goal. I, I've changed a lot because before it was like this band-aid, which was probably a very unhealthy way for me to be using alcohol. The thing is with the neurodivergent existence in the neurotypical world, it's just so uncomfortable sometimes to live in a world that wasn't built for you or with your needs in mind. I understand why so many neurodivergent people are likely trying to numb their pain with alcohol. I wish we would talk a bit more about the connection between addiction and alcoholism and being neurodivergent because I have personally had this impact neurodivergent loved ones and people close to me. I see that with the people I know and care about who have gone through and experienced troubles with addiction to alcohol and other addictions and substances, those people were also dealing with other pains in their life that they were trying to numb and they were trying to survive. A lot of this is because people don't talk about mental health or don't talk about their struggles. All of these different things contribute to, you know, the stigma. But just like when I was dealing with really, really, really bad social anxiety, I was using alcohol as a band-aid to get through that pain when I was struggling with my mental health. This is a heavy and a complex topic. There are the neurological and physiological components to how the alcohol impacts the neurodivergent brain. I would love for science to look more into those differences, as well as how other chemicals and medications, the differences in those things in neurodivergent and neurotypical brains, that really does fascinate me. But also, you know, looking at why neurodivergent people become addicted to things and the systematic pains that are embedded in society right now that are contributing to increases of addiction in neurodivergent people. Unfortunately, there is just so much pain in this world, as I've said, uh, a, a lot of nuance to this issue. And I would love to invite anyone here who is feeling safe to share their experience to go ahead and do so in the comments below if you feel uh, safe for you to do so. Of course, uh, if not, please, please don't. I want to continue this conversation because I think it's an important issue that is a bit taboo and doesn't get covered. Thank you 
so much for hanging out this week and sitting through a very serious video. If you are still here and watching all the way down to the end, I am really grateful for you doing that. If you found this helpful ed or educational and you are still here, I'd love for you to go ahead and hit that thumbs up so I know that this was useful to you. If it was useful enough that you think someone else may find it useful, please share this video so that it can reach and help more people. I am really grateful for each and every one of you for being here, commenting, sharing your experience, sharing this video so that more people may find it, and always giving your feedback and video suggestions for the future. I could not do this without you. Also, of course, as always, thanks to the Patreon subscribers, YouTube channel members, and Facebook supporters who do that little bit of monetary subscription to help me create this quality content. This blog is made possible by viewers like you, web hosting, transcriptioning software, things like that, video editing wouldn't wouldn't be possible w without the viewers. So I always want to express my gratitude for you all. I couldn't do it without you. So thanks for being here. I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.